Welcome to St. Paul's United Church here in Midland, Ontario. Today's worship service is very different. It's a journey through some suffering and pain in which we as a congregation and as Christians walk with our First Nations, our Indigenous uh, women and community as they remember the murdered and missing Indigenous women. It's a very painful part of our Canadian history and the racism and the violence against First Nations women and Métis women is significantly higher per population than it is against all other women in our country. And so we join with them in their sorrow and in their remembering and honoring the lives of these many, many women. So the service is indeed quite different. But we have some interesting pieces of that. You will catch glimpses of the red dresses mm -hmm. that are hanging outside, and you'll see some in a minute in the uh, sanctuary. Um, to remember them as you drive by or if you see it here on the video, please say a prayer for them and their families. And uh, I wanted just to thank uh, Sandra and Roger Flint who put up the red dresses for us. Sandra's also a part of the service today. And then Bonnie Sheriff and Lorraine Lacroix are uh, two of the ones, Métis and First Nations women. Usually we have quite a number of them. They drum and they smudge the dresses. But uh, with a, a shutdown now that only allows five people <laughs> in any gathering outdoors, um, we had two people putting up the dresses, one doing the video, <laughs> and so there were two only doing the smudging right. this year. But you will see that it's a sacred uh, ritual, and it is part of the closing of the service as well. We also have some neat music. We do have some neat music, yeah. yes. Uh, so in keeping with uh, the, the theme, uh, first of all, um, uh, Tim McNabb, music yeah. director of Halifax Lutheran Church. I know, Halifax Lutheran Church. Yeah. We, we, thank you, Tim, if yeah. you happen to be watching this. <laughs> uh, did a version, you actually found it, um, uh, of When Pain of the World. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we've, with permission... Uh, grabbed that from Tim. So that's part of the service today. That's the opening. Yes, and you did the pictures and the words so yes. we could sing along. Yes, We're exactly. hoping you'll sing that. And and Tim does a great job. So uh, he here's a collaboration, another uh, silver mm -hmm. lining Who knew? of the <laughs> pandemic. Who We're knew? working with a Lutheran church <laughs> in Halifax. Yep, yep. Um, and, and thank you. Thankfully, uh, you know, they were quite willing to share. So that's great. Um, then uh, there's another piece that's uh, highly um, unusual and certainly new to all of us. Um, Miranda Cook Schultz um, and her husband Nick. So Miranda uh, has written a song about a colleague, friend of hers that um, was teaching kindergarten in Nunavik. Yes, uh, it's in Nunavik mm -hmm. in and, uh, Kangersuk. I'm not sure if I pronounced good it Good job. Right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, sadly, she um, was uh, murdered um, in domestic violence incident, and um, Miranda wrote a song about it. So we're using that song today. So it's Miranda. She has a band uh, called Lake Roads Band, um, and uh, I did pictures and the words so that you can... So the, the words are impactful. So yeah. you needed to get every uh, visual aid with the words so that you can hear it and see it because they uh, really are uh, striking. Very striking. Mm -hmm. and, and it's a song that was done to remember um, Mary Joanna. And Mary Joanna's family may or may not be watching today. Right. They, they, right. uh, we have their permission to use this song. Mm -hmm. And if, if family and friends of Mary Joanna are watching, uh, we are very sorry for your loss. Please Indeed. know that we are keeping you in our thoughts and prayers here at St. Paul's United. So thank you to Miranda. Cook Schultz for bringing this to our mm -hmm. attention and we've incorporated mm -hmm. it in. I need to add a little bit to that mm -hmm. because I was in touch with Miranda and I assumed this but I confirmed with Miranda. At the end of the song you will hear uh, Joanna's, Mary Joanna's voice singing. Ah. Yes, um, I believe she's singing with her class. 
Oh, how wonderful. But I, I knew the voice was it. different, and then I thought, I bet that's her. And so I got in touch with Miranda. So that gives me chills. Yeah. So it's, a, it's just a, a, a real connection with a, someone here in St. Paul's to this very painful story of loss and suffering and grief, for sure. Um, on a very different note, uh, I do have to announce that we are having an official board meeting <laughs> via Zoom, and that is going to be on Tuesday, May the 25th at 7 p.m. So all members of the official board, um, please note that. That was very different. <laughs> yes, yes. So on that note, as we continue on with our worship service, May, in the story of suffering, in the story of racism, in the story of violence, we know that Jesus is. God walks with us in suffering, knows our struggle, and is with each and every one of us. And for some of those women who are still missing, and we do not know if they are living or dead, we ask that God will be with them and the Spirit enfold them as we seek to walk this path together of healing. Let us worship. Good morning, my name is Sandra Flint and I'm a member of St. Paul's Church. Let us pray. Creator, sacred presence, one who walks with us even in suffering, be with us in our worship. Today we remember the missing and mur murdered indig indigenous women here in Canada and in other parts of the world. Our hearts are broken as we join with families who mourn and seek justice. Help us to walk with them and to work for change. Help us to confront our racism and systematic injustice. Amen. surrounds us with darkness and despair when searching just confounds us with false hopes everywhere when lives are starved for meaning and destiny is bare we are called to follow Jesus and let God's healing flow through us. We see with fear and trembling our aching world in need, confessing to each other our wastefulness and greed. May we with steadfast caring the hungry children feed. We are called to follow Jesus and let God's justice flow through us. The church is a whole Living waters fill to nourish all the people, God's purpose to fulfill. May we with humble courage be open to God's will. We are called to follow Jesus and let God speak. We are called 
And today we acknowledge the pain of our First Nations and Indigenous people for missing and murdered women. We light this Christ candle to remind us that Christ is in us. And as we light the different colors of the First Nations candles, may it remind us that we are called to be in reconciliation not only with our First Nations, Métis, Indigenous people, but to work for a path of healing and reconciliation and a better future. Because the pain in the world is real. May we remember them. I want to acknowledge that we are on the traditional lands of the Huron Wendat First Nations people and that we seek to be in right relationship with Beausoleil First Nations. We have had a painful and tragic past. May we together work for a more wonderful, honoring and dignity-filled future. Hello, good folk of St. Paul's United Church Midland. I'm Philip Cable, and it's a pleasure to be taking part in your worship uh, once again. Um, I am reading to you uh, from Mark's Gospel, Chapter 5, verses 25 to 34, and may these ancient words share wisdom for our day. And there was a woman who had had a flow of blood for 12 years, and who had suffered much under many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and was no better, rather grew worse. She had heard the reports about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his garment, for she said, If I touch even his garment, I shall be made well. And immediately the hemorrhage ceased, and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. And Jesus perceived in himself that power had gone forth from him, immediately turned about in the crowd and said, Who touched my garments? And his disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing around you, and yet you say, Who touched me? And he looked around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had been done to her, came in fear and trembling and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. Amen. Today's service, for me, and perhaps for others, 
is one of the most difficult and painful services that I do each year. This is the third year running that St. Paul's has chosen to be part of the Red Dress Project. We were approached by some Métis women to ask if we would hang some dresses in our trees outside on the lawn. And we're right downtown on Main Street, very visible. As I started to inquire about this, I was reminded again of the missing and murdered Indigenous women. And this project was started with an artist out of Winnipeg who did this huge display of red dresses as an artwork. And it was picked up across the country and then lower into the United States as a symbol to remind us to remember these missing and murdered women. I had a parishioner tell me last year that, you know, really, Karen, I see those dresses and it's kind of eerie. Good. They're intended to be. They're intended to make us uncomfortable. They're intended to remind us of the suffering and the loss and the grief of missing and murdered Indigenous women. They are intended to remind us of a horrible past and current reality because Indigenous women in Canada have far higher rate of the violence and abuse against them than other women in Canada. No abuse is acceptable, but to have this extraordinary difference is just painful and points to the reality of the racism. The inquiry, our national inquiry into missing and murdered Indigenous women was painful. This inquiry over two years heard many, many painful stories, looked at reports of police records, interviewed many people across the country. And it was not an easy process, nor was it a perfect process. The summary report alone is pages and pages and pages long. And it was very much um, a crisis for some that they named this reality as genocide. We have a very painful past here as Canadians. It is more than just racism. It is deliberate violence against a particular group of people and of women in our society. We want to acknowledge that there's violence and abuse against many people in our society and around the world. But today, the sheer volume of women who are indigenous, who are gone missing or murdered, it's just overwhelming. There are women who told their stories of escaping after being locked up in apartments and raped, some as little as 12 years old. This is a story that breaks our hearts. Why do we hang the red dresses? Because we're called to walk with the suffering and we're called as Canadians to work for a different future. And to do that, we must acknowledge and confess the injustice and work to change it. We weep with those who are weeping. And we acknowledge the pain. And on this Sunday in particular, we also Remember that the prophet Micah says, What does the Lord require of you? To seek justice and love kindness and walk humbly with your God. We want justice for these women. We want things to change. We must work against the systemic injustice for this is part of a system in which the missing persons were ignored, actual numbers were never kept, and we actually have no idea the numbers. Some estimate it to be as low as 1,200 to 1,500. That's 1,500 
and us others much, much, much higher. Every missing and murdered woman is one too many. And so we want justice and we want to work against the systemic injustice and the racism that has enabled this to happen in the first place. And we want to remind ourselves that kindness and love and compassion should be the norms of all societies and violence and abuse and all of those things that just overwhelm and take down people should not be part of the world that we strive for. And to walk humbly with God is to acknowledge to acknowledge as Canadians that this is our story too. It's not just the grieving families, but we've been part of a society that has allowed it to happen and we must join our voices of lament, our voices of tears, our voices of compassion, our voices of anger that works for justice for these women and for all. The story that was read is a fascinating story that Reverend Philip Cable read for us this Sunday. Jesus has been called prior to the beginning of the story that Philip started to read. A man comes, he's a powerful man, he's a wealthy man, and he begs Jesus to come. His 12-year-old daughter is ill and she's dying, and if the rabbi would only come, please. That's humility. A very public, powerful person begging for Jesus to come and help him. And so the crowd gathers. This is news. And they're crowded around him as he's striding with the father ahead of him, trying to get to this home and to this dying child. And as Jesus is in the midst of that, he stops suddenly. He absolutely just stops completely and people jostle and they say, and, and the disciples are looking at him, what's up, Jesus? Like, what are you doing? And Jesus says, who touched me? And they look at him and say, are you kidding, Jesus? Like, have you any, uh, just look around at the crowd. What do you mean, who touched me? And Jesus says, no. Who touched me. The Bible story simply tells us he felt power, energy draining from him, and everything comes to a halt. And you can imagine the crowd wondering, what's going on? And then the father of this dying child just beside himself because Jesus has stopped. Isn't he going to come? My child's dying. I mean, there's so much tension in this story. And Jesus waits. He waits for someone to come forward. And a woman comes forward. She had quietly slipped up and felt that if she could only just touch the hem of Jesus' robe, perhaps she too could be healed. By stopping and asking that question, Jesus took what was hidden and brought it into full view. Just as this day we are taking what has been hidden, the stories of these missing girls and women, aunties and daughters, friends, neighbors and cousins, and we're bringing it to the light, to the light of God and to the light of the world. And the story of this woman is painful, too. She's ill. She's very ill. She's had a flow of blood. Could have been menstrual. We have no idea. And it's been going on for years. She spent every dime she had. She's now in poverty. She's still very ill. And probably, like the young 12-year-old girl, she's dying. She didn't want it to be public because, well, because it's so personal. In Jesus' day, if a woman was bleeding, she couldn't be out in public. She couldn't worship 
A man couldn't touch her or he would become unclean. If a woman was menstruating, she was declared unclean for a week. If she bore a male child, she was unclean for two weeks. If she bore a female child, four weeks. She had to stay hidden, couldn't go out. And if anyone went near her, well, they became unclean too. Then they'd have to go to the temple and publicly declare themselves or the synagogue as unclean. No wonder she didn't want Jesus to know. And you can imagine the anxiety and the anguish she experienced when he was lifting her story up and she would be known as the one who'd made the rabbi unclean. There's so much to this story. Jesus brings suffering out of the darkness and into the light. Jesus brings that which is supposed to remain hidden into the light. Jesus takes the private and makes it public. And he takes this woman's story. And he wants the world to know that this is a valued woman of faith. She's not unclean. She's not to be hidden away. She's not to walk this road and journey alone, suffering. He lifts her up and says, Woman of faith, you are healed. Go. Woman of faith. He gives her back not just healing in a physical sense, but healing in a personal sense, in a sense of her own dignity and self-worth because he doesn't even chastise her and he doesn't humiliate her because she's touched him. He's willing to be unclean with her. He's willing to enter into her suffering. He's willing to go on record for being there for her. That's what the Red Dress Project is about for us. We need to lift out that which others would think is shameful and hidden and why would you ever mention that? What's that got to do with faith anyhow? It has everything to do with our faith. It's about us journeying to a better world. It's about us lifting up injustice and seeking justice. It's about us dealing with our own personal attitudes And it's about us calling our whole society to the racism racism and the systemic injustice that we are part of and many have condoned. Our silence supports injustice. I want to hang up the red dresses so we walk with our sisters together. And if it makes us feel uncomfortable, more power to us. Last year, seven of our dresses were stolen from the trees. We just went out and got more. I invite you to come down, if you're able, to see the red dresses in person. We have pictures of them on our today's service. We've included the women drumming and smudging And we want you to know that we walk with our sisters and brothers because we're part of the path of reconciliation. We've committed ourselves to that as the United Church of Canada. Might you commit yourself as an individual and as a person who calls yourself a Christian so that our future holds promise and not fear and hidden secrets that violate others are brought to the light in Christ. So be it. Amen. Where was
Eyes bright as embers, dimples deep as rivers, flowing from Ungava all through the Tanja. See her fingers drumming, hear her voice singing, songs warm as panic and laughter sweet as tea in the land of the midnight sun. She was a bright one. Always gathering the children, shining. Our love for her rushes like water, going on forever. No dam can stop it, wildly blowing, fiercely glowing. To a wooden rifle, some threshold for sorrow, forever broken in the land of the midnight sun. She was the bright one, always gathering the children shining. Let us not forget her and every other who ever. By a quiet violence, a violence grown slowly, a violence that is swimming deep beneath the watery surfaces of smiles. Might we hear it treading, or might we glimpse it shimmering? Let us hunt together, or cast it to the wind. You in the water, you in the river, you in the music, we sing with you forever in the land. A prayer for missing and murdered Aboriginal women. Let us pray. Creator, remember your beloved children. Remember the hundreds of missing and murdered Aboriginal women. Remember your beloved children as we remember you. Help us to love, support, and protection for Abor Aboriginal children. We know that all children have the right to a home that will love them, a community that will support their needs, and a society that will protect and nurture them. Yet, we also know that many Aboriginal children grieve the loss of their moms and aunts, live in communities that are underserviced, and in a society that is systematically discriminative and oppressive. And so we pray for these children. God. Remember us, Creator, when we seeking guidance in how to address this national tragedy. Help us to better understand the root causes of violence against Aboriginal women. Provide energy and stamina to the faithful people and organizations that are working with Aboriginal women to seek justice and healing. And ensure that our actions do not add to the further marginalization of Aboriginal women. Remember us, Creator. Nurture and care for the women who are still missing. 
May they be sustained by love despite the hatred around them. Gather the women who have been murdered. May they find peace despite the violence that has bound them. Comfort the families and communities of the missing women. May they find joy in the memories of their loved ones, despite the sadness in their hearts. Remember us, Creator. Restore us the stories of those women who are missing and who have been murdered, so that their memory and legacy will continue. Keep us restless until we are able to find peace. Remember your beloved children, Creator. Remember the grandmas, mothers, sisters, aunties, partners, and friends who have been viciously taken from their communities. Remember the loved ones who miss them. Remember the faithful who have continually prayed to you throughout the seasons and throughout the years, and join our prayers with them. Amen. Sheltering wings, her gathering wings protect you. May God's nurturing arms, her cradling arms sustain you. And hold you in her love, and hold you in her love. May God's Our service has come to a close. We have gone through a painful journey on this worship service because there is pain in the world. And we have asked God to be with those murdered, our missing women and their families, and with us so that it may never happen again. And so as we draw to a close, remember that God stays with us through the night, stays with us through pain and suffering until the morning breaks again. <laughs>